the battery in this uh, 1972 Lincoln Continental has been slowly failing over time. Probably for the last three weeks, the uh, big 460 V8 engine in there has been getting slower and slower to turn. And um, we've got a pretty interesting failure mode on this battery. Actually, a pretty common failure mode that's uh, very easy to see due to the fact, uh, due to the way the battery is constructed. It's a conventional lead acid battery, flooded lead acid battery type versus the maintenance free or absorb lax mat. So it kind of brings everything out of the open for us to see. And um, this particular failure mode um, in this battery uh, turned out to be uh, one or more shorted cells. And that's pretty easy to see in this particular case. Now, had I not have these caps off of here, or if this were a maintenance free battery where you can't take the caps off, you might think that this thing's in pretty good shape because it's holding a, it's taking some current or accepting a charge, or it appears to be accepting a charge, it's running at about five amps right now, but that's actually deceiving. That'll that'll be five amps all night long. It'll never go lower than that, or not or not much lower than that. And that's because we have shorted cells, which are evident here. This is the uh, positive side of the battery, and that's the negative side of the battery. And uh, you can see some acid splashes on the top because uh, it's gassing excessively. And uh, the shorted cell, basically, is going to be identified by the cells that don't have a lot of activity going on. So, going from the positive side to the negative side, this cell doesn't look like it has much going on at all. That cell's pretty busy. That cell's even busier. It's actually cloudy in there, so it's uh, really getting a charge. So is the adjacent cell. That cell's pretty much dead. And last cell, that's pretty busy. So it looks like this cell here, and that's this cell here on the very end, appear to be shorted or nearly shorted. And so, essentially, what's going on now is that you've got a uh, what was a 12 volt battery reduced to 8 volts. And so, the reason why the charger's putting out 5 amps and the cells seem pretty busy is that this 8 volt battery is essentially being overcharged at 13 to 14 volts by the battery charger. So if I continue to charge this battery in this condition it's basically going to ruin all the other cells. It's going to um, gas excessively and cause a lot of damage. A lot of times what happens with these you can kind of see the individual cells in there as the plate material sheds off and lands at the bottom of the battery and it builds up over time and it starts to uh, cause a dead short. And that's why the engine's cranking over slowly. It's not that the remaining cells don't have enough current to start the engine, it's just the engine's now starting on 8 volts instead of 12. And even on a 12 volt battery when the engine tries to crank it could dip to 10 volts or 9 volts. So you're already starting out at a fairly low voltage at just 8 volts. So I would be very surprised tomorrow if this engine's going to crank over at all. I'm going to have to put a booster battery on it or something like that to uh, get it to crank over most likely. But um, unfortunately, this is uh, the kind of battery that's not made anymore, literally. This is uh, an exact replica or reproduction of the original battery that would have gone in this car the SV29HR, even down to the way it's constructed. Typical flooded lead acid battery, not uh, lead alloy or anything like that, just pure lead. And I got a lot of use out of it. So I wanted to put another battery in here exactly like this to maintain the original look. And when I called the company that actually makes this battery, I think the company's out in Ohio, and um, Asked them how it shipped. Is it shipped dry? Do you have to add acid? And they said, well, oh no, that's, they're all maintenance free now. And um, I asked, what do you mean? And they said, well, what they end up doing is, is they have the original molds 
for the uh, hard rubber battery cases that you see here and they basically just put a maintenance free battery inside of that connect it to these posts here and seal it up and call it a day and you have these original caps still <coughs> and the uh, battery that they use ironically enough is an Odyssey battery same kind of battery that I have in the uh, Ford F-250 that I made a video of not too long ago and uh, that's a, an, ex an absorbed glass matte battery or valve regulated lead acid battery it's a very good battery um, but I wanted to find a battery that basically um, has a lot of this older technology just for the interest of it and the fun of it and she said they haven't made this particular battery in about 10 years so what evidently ended up happening was is when I bought this battery I, uh, I ended up getting a battery that was very very old even though I paid a new battery price but that's not really all so bad the battery was shipped dry and uh, as long as the battery is completely dry and never charged or used the battery can actually last a very long time sitting on the shelf and as soon as you add acid and activate it you can get a long life out of the battery and actually I have I've gotten about four or five years out of this battery which is actually pretty darn good a lot of new batteries that you get at the car parts stores last that long or maybe even less so I, I got my money's worth out of the battery that's definitely for sure but um I don't think I'll go back in with the same kind of battery the reproduction type battery and um, the reason is is the valve regulated lead acid or absorbed glass matte batteries are very very sensitive to being overcharged you can't really go beyond about 14.8 15 volts before um, the battery starts to gas and those special vent valves pop and the battery loses electrolyte and there's no way to replenish the electrolyte like it is on this battery where you just uh, add distilled water and um, the charging system on this car is all original it's got the original 1972 65 amp alternator and it's got the um, mechanical voltage regular regulator down in there where it's got uh, basically a relay in there that goes on and off and on and off to modulate the um, electric field and the rotor the uh, spinning part of the alternator to control the voltage well these voltage regulators do a pretty good job for a non-computer controlled engine where basically the only uh, electronic part on this car is the uh, AM FM stereo radio that's perfectly fine for a car like this but uh, the charging system is not really uh, precise enough to maintain a uh, pretty narrow voltage range needed for the uh, absorbed glass mat or valve regulated lead acid battery unfortunately what I could do if I really wanted to is go ahead and put that replacement battery in here which is really going to be an odyssey and um, swap that regulator out for an electronic voltage regulator it'll bolt right in and the electrical connector is exactly the same and it'll bring the car much more current but I kinda like the idea of having the mechanical regulator in there uh, it's kinda neat how it works and it keeps the originality of the car and batteries basically are considered consumable items they don't you know there's no way a battery is going to last 42 years so it's understandable to replace batteries and coolant hoses and fan belts and things like that but the actual components like the alternator and voltage regulator um, distributor things like that I want to keep all those parts original as much as I can in fact the alternator I actually rebuilt that put new bearings in it new brushes new rectifier that thing basically is like new even though it looks like it's uh, 40 some odd years old but the battery unfortunately I'm going to have to uh, replace and uh, put a modern battery in here and I think um, the best thing to do is to go ahead and put a group 27 um, probably a DECA battery in here probably a 727 MFP something like that I think that battery is going to have around 825 850 cold cranking amps which is plenty for um, this engine and uh, this climate and it'll be a little bit smaller than this battery this group 29 is almost approaching a group 31 group 31 battery is an actual uh, 
commercial truck battery you find in buses and uh, 18 wheelers and things like that. I was really hoping I could get a new battery that's just like this. I can show you guys how you know how you add acid and charge it up and stuff like that. But the company I call, they're the only company in the country that has the original molds for these batteries. So it's really the only uh, option I have, and they don't make those batteries anymore. I might, if I called around for weeks on end, be able to find one, maybe, that's been sitting on the shelf for 12 years, but you do that, you'll end up with the same problem you have now. You won't get a whole lot of life out of it. But um, I think a group, a nice DECA Group 27 battery will look good in here. It'll be maintenance-free. It'll be a flooded battery. Um, I, th I believe the caps are removable, so you could add distilled water if you wanted to, although it's not necessary. It'll pretty much be a lead-calcium battery and um, give me a lot more power and everything. I had a good run with this one. It was neat to uh, have the original looking battery in here and I certainly could put one of those in as an option. I could just temporarily, if I wanted to go to a car show, I could temporarily put the electronic regulator in there and put the Odyssey battery in there with a look-alike cover on it. But um, I think at this point I'm going to see what happens when I put the uh, Group 27 in there. But I kind of just wanted to show you guys the, the failure mode of the battery. It's actually taking more than 5 amps now. It's actually going up and not down. So we're definitely basically overcharging this 8 volt battery now. That's exactly um, a telltale symptom of one or more shorted cells. No activity there. Lots of activity here and here and here. None here. And a lot there. So I've got two shorted cells. It's just kind of fascinating um, how these things tend to fail over time. And a shorted cell, or more than one shorted cell, is a very common failure. Root cause being uh, basically plate shedding. Due to the uh, charging and discharging cycles, the heat from the engine compartment, the vibration from the road, it just causes the active material on those plates to shed off over time and drop to the bottom of the case. And... Uh, short those cells out. So I uh, just thought this would be a little bit interesting to show you guys. And uh, the next video is going to be the replacement battery, what I end up choosing.